I'm about to show you three professional After Effects techniques that you need to know. The first one is Colorama, and this is an interesting effect that you can be very creative with once you understand its potential. And if you want to see what it can do, watch to the end where I combine every technique we're about to learn. So to show you how Colorama works, here is a simple black and white gradient. Now let's add a Colorama effect, and you'll see that we now have a rainbow of colors, and if we open up the output cycle dropdown, we can see where the colors are coming from. These colors are being mapped onto the original gradient according to the light and dark values. This is visible if I make the black part of the gradient lighter. You can see the color shifts according to the output cycle. We can also change the angle of the gradient which will affect the angle of the output. It's also easy to pull out or add colors to our gradient and you can adjust each color as you see fit. Now I can hear you asking, why not just use a regular gradient? Admittedly, in some cases that may be the right way to go, but it's a lot slower to get all the gradients in there, and Colorama has additional benefits. For example, you could choose not to interpolate the palette, which can be useful. You can change the cycle repetitions value, like this, something which would suck to do with the regular gradient. And my favorite part, if we open up the input phase and change the phase shift, we can easily animate the gradient. And if you're not fucking applauding right now, you clearly don't realize how big a deal this is, so let me release you from this ignorance. Look at this sexy gradient, which I made by dropping a stock standard gradient ramp onto a solid and then adding the color arm effect with these colors and changing the cycle repetitions to two. And now we can infinitely animate this. Now without color armor, it's a whole schlep. One of the ways we can do this is to make a shape layer with the gradient, then add a repeater, increase the copies and change the position until we create a seamless edge. And now we can animate the position, but it still has an edge when we want to animate. And yes, we can just stretch this out with the repeater, but it's just an extra unwanted step. And if we want to loop this whole thing, we need to add keyframes and perfectly line up the second keyframe and then add a loop out expression, as opposed to Colorama, where we simply add a time expression to the phase shift and done. Also with the gradient ramp, we can really easily change the angle of the gradient like so. But to do so with a shape layer would force us to pre-compose it before changing the rotation and scaling it up to cover the full composition. So if I just carried you from the depths of ignorance, show me your appreciation by giving this video a like and sharing it with your fellow ignorant motion designers to give them the gift of knowledge. Now take a look at this scene, colored only in black and white gradients. And if you're wondering how I have gradients on a 3D object like this, it's a little trick you probably haven't seen before. So I'm still using the classic 3D render which supports gradients, and to get this extrusion, I have a top and bottom shape, and in between, I've just evenly spaced a bunch of layers. As you can see, these are all spaced by two in Z space. Pretty neat, right? Now with the adjustment layer, let's add a colorama with an animated phase shift and a bit of noise and look at the interesting result. This is a great technique to have in your arsenal and something to experiment with and be creative with to see what kind of dope shit you can create. Next, we have fractal noise, and this effect is a very powerful way to generate visuals. So let's drop this effect onto a solid so I can show you how powerful it is. Firstly, there are a bunch of different fractal types and noise types, and I would encourage you to experiment with them on your own. There is also brightness and contrast to experiment with. And you also have all these transform properties, rotation, scale, and offset turbulence, so there is a lot of animatability with this effect. And speaking of, one of the most powerful parts of this effect is the evolution, so look at what happens when we mess with this property. This is also something you can add a time expression to and you'll get continuous evolution. But that's all good and well, but what can you do with this? One of the uses is to create texture overlays. So if we keep the original fractal and noise type and then crank up the contrast, decrease the brightness and then drop down the scale, we get this simple texture. Let's drop that onto our previous animation and change the blending mode to add to get rid of the black so we just see our white texture. Now we can take this a step further by twirling down the evolution options and adding a time times six expression to the random seed which will now cycle infinitely through different seed options creating an animated texture like this and you can mess around with these settings to create all kinds of textures doing just that I created this texture here which is kind of like a wood grain and again we could add this to just the main shape in our previous animation to get this wood like texture onto our object finally fractal noise is a great effect to combine with other effects a good example of this is a previous tutorial I did where I created this fractal
fractal noise, animating the offset turbulence and evolution to create this. Then I added a polar coordinates effect to get this, and then an extract effect to remove the black. Then I pre-comped and duplicated the comp to create a few variations. And already this is an interesting result, but I was looking to create something specific. So I pre-comped all of that, adding these effects to create this final result. The point being that fractal noise is a great starting point for an animation, especially if you can get creative with how you combine it with other effects and animation. On top of that, you can also use fractal noise as a driver for certain effects. And to explain what I mean by that, we first have to look at our next pro technique, displacement maps, which will absolutely blow your mind. And if you're enjoying learning some more advanced motion design techniques, let's talk about the sponsor of this video, Skillshare, the largest online learning community for creatives, and they have classes that can help you evolve your motion design in a structured way. There are learning paths for all sorts of motion design related skills, and for those of you that already have the basics down, the master Adobe After Effects professional techniques learning path is perfect to take you further. Skillshare is also a great place to gain knowledge about freelancing, like building social media and business principles. I've been watching this class by Callum McHugh, who gets into how to grow social media and use it to get clients. You can browse the creative career topics to jumpstart your freelancing journey. I've also become very interested in creativity itself and how to tap into it to create better motion design. And Skillshare caters to this with one of their brand new class topics, creativity and inspiration. And there are many more categories to explore like design, art and illustration, film and video, music and audio, productivity, business, marketing, and the list goes on so you can develop any skills you need for success. First, 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. Get started today. Now let's get into displacement maps. They're used to quite literally displace objects and you drive the displacement using a map that you can create in After Effects. So to show you what that means, I've made this black and white background, which is going to be our map. And I created this using an effect stack that we now know very well, a gradient ramp and colorama. I have a shape layer on top with the gradient as well. And now let's add the displacement map effect. Let's change the map layer to our displacement map, making sure to set the source to effects and masks and then increase the vertical displacement. And you can see that the shape is being distorted according to the displacement map layer. And this is such an awesome technique because you can be really creative with your map to control the results. Let's go back into our map and drop in a fast box blur and increase the blur radius. And you can see that softening the map rounds out our edges into sexy curves. Now let's go into the Colorama input and add an expression to the phase shift, time times 100. And now we have a really nice sine wave effect. Now you may remember we talked about using fractal noise as a driver. So what I meant was that we can use a solid with a fractal noise as our map for the displacement map effect. So here is a fractal noise layer where I've animated the evolution and we also have this circle shape. Now, if we add a displacement map to the shape and change the map to the fractal noise layer, increase the horizontal and vertical displacement and hit play, we get this glitchy distortion to our center shape. And quick tip here, the displacement map moves the object out of its original position. So you can add a transform effect and change the position to offset this. And there you have it. Pretty neat, right? The key thing to remember here is that you can use any layer to drive this effect and you can apply the displacement to any layer or shape so you can create some very unique results by experimenting with it. So do that. Now I did mention that I would show you something using all of these techniques. So here we are. Let's go into the pre-comp and then the box layer to show you what's going on. So this is simply a rotating box made out of 3D shapes in the classic 3D renderer. So I could make the box out of gradient layers. I adjusted the opacity of these to make them see through, but cranking them back up to 100 will allow you to see the gradients better. And then outside of the comp, I just added a colorama and animated the phase shift. Then I created a variation of this box to be used as a map with the only difference being these two completely black faces and these will create displacement without any distortion. You'll see what I mean in a bit. Then we have the circle and it is literally just sitting on top of this box and does not look at all like it's inside the box. And this is where the magic of the displacement map kicks in. So if I turn this back on, you can see how the circle gets distorted to look like it's being refracted through glass. How dope is that? Now the camera I added is there to create a more isometric perspective. And then I have two particle pre-comps. And again, these have displacement maps on them. So they look like they are inside the box and one has a fast box blur to create a glow. Of course, I had to use fractal noise in this example. So that's why I included these layers, but I still think it's a pretty dope effect. For the final comp, the background is animating using the same colorama technique. There's a fractal noise texture and a glow and noise adjustment layer. And this is the final result using all of these powerful techniques. Are there any other pro techniques you would add to this list? 
let me know below and of course subscribe for more motion xp